everyone. Welcome back to RTS and welcome back to our 6x6 series. And today we are going to continue to play with 6x6 paper pads created by the fabulous Allison Davis for Scrapbook Generations. And everything that you need, if you want to grab this PDF class, look below. There's a discount. And then everything you would need to know about Scrapbook Generations is listed below. So hit that Show More button and look at all of that information. You'll be there for hours. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And then especially look at their free sketches. That is very generous that a company offers that. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue with Allison's concept of teaching us what we can do with these little puppies right here. Now, if you don't have six by six paper pads, don't worry. You can do the same thing with any piece of paper, just playing around with the sizes that we're talking about in this class. You don't, that's not mandatory. You don't have to have six by six paper pads, but you know, we usually all have them and we have an abundance of them, including me. Yes, I have an abundance of them. So we first talked about six by six papers. The first concept that Allison was trying to teach us was using them as is in this six by six size. Now see, this is just a piece of Prima cut down to six by six. So again, you don't have to use a six by six pad to learn this concept, no, uh, because Allison is great that way. And then the other thing is, is we talked in the second concept of cutting these squares of six by six down into smaller size squares, and we played with that. Now what I showed in the series just touched upon those two concepts. So definitely look into Allison's class for even more talk and showing of those two concepts. And the third concept that we're going to learn, and the last one, is cutting these into strips. So this six by six, now if you cut it simply in half, you get two three by six strips. So now we're going to play with three, three by six strips, and what can you do with them? And we could be here a week. <laughs> Everything you could do Oh my goodness, my goodness, yes. And then, of course, if your paper is double-sided, when you cut it in half, now there's two pieces of pattern just with one cut down the middle. Isn't that fun? So let's just play simply. Yes, let's just simply play. So I have some photos here from Disney Epcot in the France Pavilion. And I'm telling you, if you can get over there before anybody else, you can get some great snapshots. I love walking over there. Uh, sometimes we'll stay at the Yacht Club. We walk over there. It's just beautiful. It's a beautiful little walk. It's just beautiful. I can't say enough about that. Uh, so what we're going to do is I have some papers here. And so I just have these papers cut into 3 by 6 These were original 6 by 6 papers. I just cut them in half. So I have 3 by 6 pieces of paper. And I'm simply just going to play with these because we need something to show. And also, look, let's get cracking. Okay, so let's start start with the first thing we went to in the series, and that was these photos here. If you have one that is a four by six horizontal and one that is a vertical. Okay, and we talked about how this is such a hard, what do you do with that? And in this series, we showed a, a variety of ways you can handle this because sometimes on a one page, you don't always get to pick two horizontal or two, two vertical to tell your story. So we took that and we took that six by six paper as is, then we used it in squares, and now we can do the same thing with strips. And these are simply three by six strips. That's it. How simple is that? So again, another option to be playing with these papers. Again, put your title there, journaling here, a visual triangle, and it's so simple, okay? Now let's expand that to a two page, okay? Because why not? <laughs> We're just sitting here playing. Why not play? Okay, I'll get this in frame. I'm not feeling the best today. I don't think I've been feeling good for the last month. Uh, so just bear with me a little bit. But, you know, I'm not that sick that I can't scrapbook. You know what I mean? I don't feel good enough to do housework, but I certainly feel good enough to scrapbook. Oh, my goodness. I can't get into laughing. No. Okay, so there you go. Now, with this 4 by 6 photo here on the left that is in the vertical, you could slide this up or you could slide this down. So that's another option, or you could simply put it in the middle and then play. Title here, an embellishment cluster there. Just keep on playing. It doesn't end. And then what you can do over here is, let's pretend these are horizontals, okay? Because that's the only horizontal I have on this trip. Because you can see, I have a lot of wallets. I love playing with wallets because you can get a lot on there. And then what you can do is that you can keep on playing with these three by, three by six strips. Okay, now there's five. And... 
I will tell you when you're playing with these strips, if you go with an odd number, especially if you're using a different pattern for each strip, odd is really the way you want to go because then your eye can find the center very quick. You could definitely put another one there uh, to fill up the paper. So let's do that for a minute. You could do that. There's nothing wrong with that, but I like I like an odd number. I just I just think it's more pleasing, but you can certainly do with whatever you like. And so then that is the three by six. And then of course you know you could run some washi here to differentiate between your photos and your paper. Okay, that's simple. Okay, and then you could even put some washi over here. Now you know Allison is known for stitching, so you know she's stitching on those three by six blocks however she can she would go around the perimeter she would go across the top across the bottom you can do a lot if you look at allison's layouts when it comes to stitching she's very talented when it comes to that now you don't have to have horizontals you don't have to have four by six you can play with wallets and we're just going to let's play with wallets and we're going to pretend that these all are horizontal i think i may have some hmm. some of these may be the same Okay, so there you can play with two 4 by 6 photos and then play with your wallets, continuing with that 3 by 6 strips. You just keep changing up your photo size, but leaving your strips as is in that 3 by 6 size, and it doesn't get old. Now, I just had a thought here. Give me a minute. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where did that thought go? I want to show you. So let's go back to those original. Well, let's just put those right there because I love looking at those flowers. Those are not all horizontal wallets but i'm gonna put them there so with the strips now remember you can do so much with the strips you can distress them you can paint them you can ink them you can even stamp on them but then what allison shows a lot too and scrapbook generation sketch has a lot of this element and that is simply replacing the strip with that three uh that same three by six size but now it's cut into a banner okay and so that's why i have these other ones and they're uh, cut into a banner so we'll replace this one and this one so you see how taking that three by six strip and now giving it an element of simply a notch to make it into a banner now look at how pretty that design is look at that and all it is is a notch now how do you create notches you can do this in a couple different ways you can flip it over find the middle just put it on your trimmer this is three by six find that one and a half mark take your pencil put that little mark there and then you take your scissors and i like using long blade scissors for this and do a snip and a snip and you get those notches or it depends on how wide your paper is you can use a hexagon punch but when you get to this three inches you're going to have to hand cut that notch because i don't think we have a hexagon punch that big <laughs> so simply there's the three by six now we just gave them a notch okay and so then you can continue to play with this you could put your title up here and come over here with your journaling leave these papers as is do an embellishment cluster or as we did in layout number one you could put your uh, title and journaling here and play with some more embellishments and if you had smaller photos you could even uh, layer some smaller photos with on top of those banners just keep on playing i mean that's really all it is so let's let's do that let's just keep on playing let's roll up the sleeves and keep on playing now of course this is a two page but you can simply just do it one page and then let's get some horizontal or let's just pretend these are horizontal okay let me i'll just put my little one here we'll pretend she's in the horizontal fashion so what you can do then with those three by three, three by six strips is that now you can play again okay tuck them under tuck them under tuck them under and you can play with whatever you want you could do three you have three photos there so you could just expand that and do three banners and then of course this makes for a very very fast two page and then put another row of three horizontals and continue with those banners and then this would be a great showcase if you wanted to talk about each individual photo, you would put your journaling on that banner spot. Isn't that fun? Of course, you can also to rotate it, and then there, that would be the vertical sense of things, okay? And then extend your banners under each photo, or what you can do is overlap them, or bring them in, such as this. There is just, I'll just keep on talking. <laughs> 
just love this process. And then once you get into the habit of just playing and moving and shifting things around, you'll just come up with so many different combinations, you just can't stop yourself. And so of course, then again, as I've always talked about, that seam, if you don't like that seam, a lot of times I don't, you would just come over here with some washi, talk about a quick page. Yes, horizontal or vertical, yes. And then one page or two page. Absolutely, using those papers in this three by six. And of course, giving it that instant notch gives it an instant look for a little bit of a little bit of effort. Okay, now what else do we what else can we play with? Well, instead of these four by six, and I will tell you my preferred way of scrapbooking is my favorites when I go to print. I will print my favorites in four by six, and then all like that's a favorite. Well, anything with my little girls are favorite. Yes, that's how we do it. Anything that has our kiddos in it, <laughs> they're our favorite photos. But then the ones that are uh, not such a great shot, then I print them in walls. So I still have the representation of what I saw that day, but I don't have everything in four by six. But I will tell you in 2020, when I come, when it comes to printing photos, I may start printing everything in four by six and just cutting everything down because I need to work on printing photos. So uh, please list below, how do you print your photos? Do you just print them all four by six and just go to town? Or do you sit and think, this is my favorite photo, I want that in a four by six and the rest in wallets? Or do you really sit down and plan your layouts before you print? Some people do that as well. Okay, so now let's play with some wallets here and let's see what we can come up with. So, oh, look at that shot. I mean, that looks like you're in France. Boy, Disney knows how to do the theming, do they not? Okay, so let's do some wallets, wallets. Let's do it this way. Wallets. Yeah, we don't have to use all four by six photos all the time. Now, these are three by six, so sometimes you'd have to adjust your photo size. But you could come over here. And, of course, you know, I always like my, my pretty paper there. And I could do three here. Okay, now let's come over here. That's the left. What do I do with my paper? And then let's do the right. And so basically we're going to end up with the same design we did. But now we're just going to be playing with wallets. Okay, and let's see how many we can get on there. Of course, I don't have mine trimmed down. Oh man, we just keep on playing. Keep on playing. That's about all the wallets I have, except for one. That's every wallet I had on a two-page spread. And then this one right here, say this is my favorite one, I would give this a double or a triple mat and tilt it, and then just keep playing with those. Oh, I'm out of it. I could play with one more. Say this one was cut down. Okay. Look at that. And that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 photos. Now those are wallet size, but you could take your favorite wallet, it doesn't have to be a 4 by 6 and give it a double mat and then that would stand out and you could put your title here, journaling here, and then also if you have all wallets, you could just print a 4 by 6 and that could be your standout photo and again, give it a little whimsical tilt, keep everything else linear, how pretty. Give it a notch, don't give it a notch, do some washi. Oh, look at this thin red and white striped washi. Doesn't that feel Parisian? Yes, <laughs> look at that. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so you will see in sketch number eight that that sketch alone has room for 10 photos. Yes, that's a great sketch if you have the class. And when we come back, we'll be talking more about Allison's work. And then also, what will I be doing with these Epcot photos? Well, I'm definitely going to be playing with this three by six in the notch. And I probably will be spanning mine across, or I could get a little crazy, and maybe mine would span, instead of spanning in a vertical, maybe I could span them in a horizontal fashion. Because you could keep on going with that. Okay, we got notch. We got some notch here. And you could keep on going. And here's the thing, when you're playing with these notches, you can shift them. So they don't all have to line up together. We have another one and we keep on going of course I like that number five I would span mine so I have that odd number okay now let me just keep see I just keep on playing and then I could take some photos photos pretend this is a well here's a vertical and here's a vertical see I like that look how quick that is I mean honestly look how quick that is 
Oh my. Okay, let's play again. Let's just keep on playing. And then, of course, I could come over here with wallets and expand them across. And then, say I would give these a notch, and then I would run my banners this way. Well, I call them banners, but they're strips. They're strips of paper. And then I could run them this way. Okay. And then, of course, I could give them a notch. I'd put them all underneath these photos. So you can split it up. You can absolutely, I didn't even have that in frame, sorry. You could have your banners going horizontal on the left, and you can also have your strips, your banners going vertical on the right. It depends on what you like. Mix it up. I really like that. Hmm. But if I didn't want that, I could keep on going, and I could keep on going with, man, I think I'm done there. <laughs> That's all the photos I have in my four by six. I could definitely do it that way. Okay. And then since these are three by six, you know, two of them would fit just like that, right? Let's just pretend. They don't all have to be cut in notches. They all have, have to be lined up, but you can definitely take your three by six. Don't even give it a notch. And right there's how you can polish that off and finish that. There's just no wrong way. <laughs> Yeah, I can even come here and I could put a couple, instead of even put a piece of, instead of putting a photo here, I could leave that empty and I could put some wallets here. I could mat them and have fun with that empty space. That's a pretty design too. It just doesn't end what you can do with these. And simply, if you're not, if you don't want to cut into your papers, which is what I do, you saw for this, I just went into some scraps. And so get some scraps out, cut them in that three by six and then play. All right, so one more thing I wanted to show when we talk about these 3x6 strips is, of course, when you take this 6x6 piece of paper and you cut it in half, you get this 3x6 strip. And if it's double-sided, you get a 2 for 1. But now remember with that learning this 3x6, you can also take this 3x6, okay, and let me flip this over, this 3x6, and then now you start playing with that three by six. So what do I mean by that? Well, now you take that three by six and you do a two by six and a one by six, and then you start playing with those. And then on the opposite end of that, you could go up to a five by six, a four by six and a five by six. You can play with those two. And then you can start playing with these three sizes all together. And I'll show you what I mean by that. You can start taking these two by six and intertwining them in with the three by six and then layering them that one by six and then just adding even more with that three by six. So now we're starting to play with the strips. So I hope you can understand uh, that that is what Allison was trying to show that with these six by six pieces of paper in these pads there are so many options. It's not just this. It's simply not just a piece of paper. No, it isn't. Okay, so now what will I be doing? Of course, we're going to be playing with uh, sketch number eight. I'm going to be playing with these photos from Disney. And then what I'm going to do is, I think, this was a plan, and I put it together really quick, is I'm going to be playing with these die cuts from Kaiser Craft because, look, they're definitely Parisian. There was also some on this side, too. I thought they were pretty. And then I'm going to be playing with some October afternoon thrift store, thrift shop, stickers and then woodland park and then this is the alpha i picked because i thought that looked very parisian and then i simply just pulled a couple other easy elements because i'm just in that mood today where things have to be easy you know how it is some days so i have this jen hatfield pack of embellishments i have some freckled fawn puffies and some pink fresh enamel dots i love those colors and then i also pulled my black box of my flat embellishments because you can see there is so much here there's die cuts and there's photo corners there's some leaves some tabs yeah there's a little bit of everything in there so that's what i'm going to be playing with i'm trying to think of a title i don't want to just say epcot france i need something a little french french yes yeah. so someone sent me some vibes so i'm going to be again playing with this sketch but i'm also going to be playing with product i'm not going to get into technique this time no I might play with some washi or, you know, you can always pull some border stickers. That's always fun or some ribbon. Oh, that might be nice to play with some ribbon and uh, you could tie some twine along with that. Hmm. You never know what we, we might get into. So come back and let's just keep on playing with this uh, six by six series. And now we're into the strips. We're going to do that. Okay. Hold on.
we are back with a finished two-page layout and of course we traveled to Paris. Yes, we traveled to France. <laughs> so this was fun. It never gets old doing Disney pages. It just never does. And I know a lot of my subscribers say the same thing. They really enjoy Disney pages. So before we get into Allison's work and what I did, you know, for this layout, I use the My Mind's Eye Pretty Things. It's just a gorgeous gorgeous uh, paper pad and I know some of you have that and if you are lucky to have this on a 12 by 12 you lucky duck I never could find one of those so that is fun so for the giveaway what do I have I have that exact paper pad by my mind's eye and it is pretty things and it is just beautiful and then of course to go with that a stamp set which is even more beautiful we have florals we have that doily on there and then we have some scallops just absolutely life is good absolutely and then to go with that if you have florals you have to have wood grain so there is an embossing folder in that wood grain just too fun so you have to be 18 or older or at least act 18 or older <laughs> you know what I mean, and then be a subscriber, and of course, this is open to everyone, and my giveaways for the series is only going to be open for a certain amount of time, so look below to see if the giveaway is still open while you're watching this, so definitely. Okay, so that is the giveaway, just something fun I wanted to do in this series, and so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what I did, because the sketch that Allison provided in the class for this one is sketch number eight, of course, and it's calling for 10 photos. I got 12 on here and three of them are four by six. So if you look at the left, there's three and then over here on the right, there are nine, three, six, nine, very fun. And of course, right there's another four by six photo that is a showcase and we'll talk about that. So all I did was take that paper pad and I cut my strips in two and a half by six. And of course, some of my six inches is underneath the photos. I did not trim that down. I just overlapped because I think it's easier to overlap photos on top of paper or vice versa than to have these match up and meet up. So I just overlapped. And then of course, I gave them all a little bit of a bend here at the notches. Not that they'll stay that way in the page protector, but there'll be a little bit of that. So that'll be fun. And I did nothing with those because the pattern speaks for itself. And up here for my title, I did not know what to title this. So what I did was I went on, of course, Google. I looked on Wikipedia as to how it was describing this uh, French pavilion at the Epcot. And I saw the word French charm. So that's what I wanted to use. But not only did I use the title French charm, I wrote it in French. Now, I can't speak French. I can't spell French. But that doesn't mean I can't use a title in French. Absolutely. So don't be afraid to do that for these different lands and definitely translate. Just go in, find a translator, put in the American words and the translation will come up. Very fun. And then I just use a couple die cuts with a bread and that bread has a bicycle. <laughs> very Paris, yes. And then of course a couple photo corners and then I gave my overall layout a black mat just to go with my title and a few other elements. And so on the right, it's the same thing. My inseam, you can see uh, there is no black mat. I just made everything go to the inseam using nine photos and all I simply did was trim them down to two and a half by three and a half. And then my four by six photo, since I am using a six by six paper, I did have to trim a little bit of my photo because I wanted a mat. So, you know, for using six by six papers, you have to trim your four by six photo. And then I left a little bit of a, a footer down here because I used an October afternoon sticker that says the only perfect life is the one that you live. So regardless of where you live, we have a perfect life. Absolutely. If you can wake up in the morning, put your feet on the floor. It's a good day. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And so since these uh, were all horizontal on the top and the bottom. In the middle, I used vertical. So wherever there was a space, we did that old technique of color blocking. I used a couple scraps from here on the left and I just filled in that. And that gave me a little bit of a space for the title. I'm sorry, the year 2011. And just a few more die cuts and bringing over that uh, black enamel dots. I have that in a couple spots. So very, very pretty. And of course, using those uh, Kaiser Craft die cuts that were Parisian. Of course, that was perfect. Why not? Absolutely. So again, very simple page. But it doesn't look simple because it is photo heavy. So of course, that's the story. And then using those pieces of paper and letting the pattern do the work. It's just easy peasy. And then of course, you notice that I don't have any journaling. I may do that on a companion page. Not sure. This may be the only ones I do. If I do, I would add a couple lines right through here. 
if I decide to do that. And then I did use some October afternoon stickers that says Splendid, Perfect Day, Breathe, Remarkable, Explore, and over here, A Walk in the Park. Is that not perfect? And I will show you where those came from. They came from Woodland Park. I will show you that they came from this right here, the Woodland Park October afternoon word stickers. Very fun. Just very, they weren't Parisian, but they definitely were a walk in the park. Very fun to do that. Okay, so I do have a few leftovers, and where will these go? I will just date them on the back, and they, when I do a Disney trip, I just keep a certain little envelope for whatever trip that is, and I keep all the leftovers with all of those photos until I'm done, and then perhaps to a review page, so that's where they will go. Now, let's talk about Allison's work, because in that sketch, it calls for 10, and when you see that sketch and you see her layout example, she followed that sketch to a T. She did exactly what was in the sketch she didn't really um deviate from it too much and then she, look how many patterns she got on her, her layout she got five patterns the same as i did on mine that was fun and then look where she has stitching <laughs> not just on paper which that is too fun and then in the details she talks about a couple of things i want to point out she, uh, look how she says one way to keep small photos from getting lost look what she gave as a recommendation and then also too she said how she loves using word stickers and i think we all love using word stickers because especially for this this was in 2011 that was eight years ago i don't really remember anything particular from this day so what do you say sometimes you just don't have anything to say put on the year at least put on the year you really need to put on the year and then use some word stickers and just let those adjectives do your journaling you don't have to worry about anything else because what would you say a perfect day a walk in the park we did some exploring everything was splendid you know you know what i'm saying so let those word stickers you you know be your go-to embellishments and i i have a whole tin of them i love word stickers and that was just she just really did a good job on that layout. But then she did a good job with this whole entire class. Absolutely. So when we come back, we will be playing with sketch number 11. So if you have that, definitely grab it out and look at it. And then if you would like to get this, you can definitely look below. There's a discount. You can get this, and it's 49 to 50 pages. And we will um, talk about sketch 11 when we come back. Now, when we come back, it will probably be five uh, four to five days before we get to the next layout because of some traveling so and then also too we have kit crunch we have the spending freeze and then we have a holiday in there so uh, just so just so you know the next uh, layout in this uh, that would be layout number seven it will be coming but we have some other things that's going on in the channel in in the meantime so that's just the way that's going to work but come back because you never know at rts what we're gonna do bye